Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna do a tier list for the bonus objectives in StarCraft II Co-op. I'll be giving them letter grades based on three criteria. One, how easy or difficult are they to complete? Two, how out of the way are they? And three, how many losses will you suffer to try to complete them? So let's get started. First, we'll start off with Chain of Ascension. The slain elementals are quite difficult because they will trap you and they will kill your stuff. You also have to go quite far out of your way just to get them. The objective is mostly in the center, but you have to go to the sides to places where you normally don't go just to get them. So I'm going to put them in C. Next, Cradle of Death. The objectives are kind of out of the way because you have to go destroy another base. You may suffer some losses and you have to slow down your game just to get them. If you have a big enough army, you don't actually lose that much stuff though. And if you're really ahead, it's not that hard to push through those bases. So I put it in B. The next one is Dead of Night. The objective is usually just uh, something that you get once you already have everything under control. The only times I really don't get it is when I'm like dying and I need to finish the map quickly. So yeah, it's pretty easy. You may lose a few units, but it's not that hard. And uh, since you clear the buildings around it, you're usually fighting near nothing, unless it's like on the right side where the infested spawn as well. When it's in the six o'clock position, it's just free. So I put it in A. Next one, lock and load. The bonus is just that golem thing that attacks you. And uh, it's not that hard. Usually you get it when you are already finished with the map and you just want to get that extra bonus for 100%. So I put this in A. You don't lose that much when you fight it. And usually when you choose to fight it, you are already like near maxed out. You probably wouldn't engage this before you finish the map. For Minor Evacuation, Minor Evacuation has Blightbringer and Eradicators, and those two are out of the way. They're in the corners, especially Eradicators, far away from anything. And some people even use like top bars just to fight them because they kill so much. There is a way to fight them, like there are tricks to beating them, but in general, they kill so much, especially the Eradicators. They deal a lot of damage, especially to people who aren't really prepared to fight them. Blightbringer is also affected by like Avenger and stuff, so he gets really crazy if there is that. And his like AOE is quite annoying as well. So I put the bonuses on Minor Evacuation in D. For missed opportunities, the two bases are slightly out the way. The top left, there are some hybrid, so it can be difficult. You may suffer some losses. You usually get them if you're already ahead, but then if you have to spend time pushing or cleaning, clearing bases, you don't really have time to get them. So kind of like Crate of Death, I put it in B. Mal Warfare, similar. You have to go to like the top left, which is out of the way. And the bottom, well, in the bottom middle, it's like, uh, it's not along the path. The second one is kind of easier because by the time you get there, you can just leave some of your army to deal with it. It's the first one that's really out of the way. And you also have to spend money. So while it's easy to complete, you have to spend extra resources. Some commanders don't want to pay for that. So it's not too hard though. So I'll put it in B. Oblivion Express, the bonuses are unguarded. They're just trains that you hit for free. The hard part is that they are kind of out of the way. If you destroy the third train, then you can go down to the bottom, kill the bonus, and then if you have mobility, teleport back just in time to deal with the attack wave. The second one, same thing. It's you destroy the top train, then the middle train, and then the bonus train, then go back and deal with the attack wave. So it's kind of along the way, kind of. And you don't really lose anything when fighting them because they don't fight back. So I put the trains, the bonus trains in A. For part and parcel, it's also trains. And similar to OE, the trains are unguarded. And part and parcel is actually a slower map. You're not rushed. So it's actually the same thing, except it's, yeah, it's even easier. The hardest part about the part and parcel trains is the first one. It comes at a time when you might not have enough firepower to take it out. You probably shouldn't use a top bar just to take it out, but if you're like Nova with Liberators or something, you can just kill it really quickly. So, A. 
Next, Rifts the Korhal. The pirate ship is definitely not out of the way. However, the second pirate ship is. And there's a whole base you have to clear just to get rid of it. The pirate ship, if you're not sure how the abilities work, they may get you and trap you and run over, fly over a lot of your stuff. So you may suffer some losses. Overall, not it's not too difficult because the path is predictable. You can see where they're going. But still, you may suffer some losses and it's the second one's kind of out of the way. So B. Scythe of Amon. Scythe of Amon. The bonus objectives are notoriously difficult, not because they're actually difficult. The hardest part about Scythe of Amon's objectives is that they're just out of the way and you're pressured on time. So if you really want to get them, you slow up down a lot. So if you go for the natural first, you may not have cleared the path to the first bonus and that ruins things. If you clear the close shard, the five o'clock shard, and then you get the bonus, then you're going to be behind in the economy because you're you haven't cleared the center yet the second area you have to go up a ramp as well and there are like battle cruisers or carriers there it's really hard clearing the second to third one that path you have to clear a lot of stuff to make sure that it's safe and if you're not fast enough then it just goes down so that's what makes the bonus really hard plus there are some there are some hybrids and in the bases so i put this bonus in c and then next one, Temple of the Past, the bonuses are pretty much along the way. The way I play it, at least, I always have time to get all three of them. So you kill the first one before the eight minute thrasher is gone because you have time to get it. And then the second one, the bottom right one or the right side one, you go after the second thrasher and then you get the third one after the third thrasher. So it's pretty much along the way, but there's uh, some lightning and stuff. The spells can cause you to suffer a few losses, but overall not too difficult. So I put it in S. It's pretty much there for you to get. For Void Launch, Void Launch is a very slow map. You have so much downtime, so you have plenty of time to push into the encampments. The only really fortified encampment is the third one, the left side. The first one, not barely anything. It's almost along the way as well because you may want to like spawn camp them. So it's kind of along the way. You also want to clear that area anyways because you want to get a head start on destroying the shuttles. Void launches, bonuses are pretty easy. So also S. So next one, Vermilion Problem. For Vermilion Problem, the bonus is Molten Sal, and he's out of the way, but the map is really slow. You have lots of time to go there, especially since when you're fighting Molten Sal, you're probably just waiting for Lava doing nothing else. So it's not really gonna slow you down by going for it. And you may go there just like uh, when you're trying to clear that southern area anyways, that little encampment for the late game. So it's kind of along the way. Molten Sal doesn't really kill anything. He frees that fire, but I don't think I've ever really lost that much from fighting him. So it's really easy. That's easy. And then for Void Thrashing, Archangel has so little HP, it's so easy to kill. One Sam grenade with Lone Wolf can kill it, so it's just that weak. And it's pretty much along the way, and fighting it won't cause you to lose that much. So if the Archangel, for whatever reason, somehow escapes, you still will fight it. You can still go to the left side and fight it and finish it off. It's an area that you probably have already cleared anyways. So yeah, Void Thrashing's also in S tier. So that's it. These are my rankings for the bonuses. You may have some slightly different opinions, so if you do, leave them in the comments below. That's it for this video, so see you all in the next one.